reaction mechanisms uh, can get a little complicated. Let me show you an example here of uh, just a sample reaction. Let's say we have 2NO plus an O2 goes to 2NO2. That seems nice. That seems like boom. These molecules collide. There goes a the reaction. But this is extremely improbable. That one, two, three reactants will collide with the right orientation and energy. That is nearly impossible. Uh, when we're talking about collisions, we're talking about two molecules colliding. So even, but this reaction happens naturally. So how does that work? What happens is there are other reactions that are happening that sum up to this overall reaction. So there are elementary steps or minor steps, intermediate steps that occur first, and then we sum them up and we're basically giving you the overall reaction. And most of what you've seen in chemistry has been the overall reaction. If you remember a pattern when we covered simultaneous or consecutive reactions, that's, this is the same concept that we're going to do right now, except we're going to put algebra to it. So, um, we want to explain what is the mechanism or what are the steps that occur to make this happen. This unprobable three molecules hitting uh, that make this occur. So what happens is we're going to have a reaction mechanism, which is a set of reactions or a set of elementary steps that occur that sum up to this, uh, the overall reaction. If you also, if you remember Hess's law, where he had a bunch of reactions that sum up to an overall, that's this stuff. But now we're going to put algebra to it. Okay, what we're going to do here, first of all, the elementary steps will have to add up to this. And we're going to account for the rate law. So that's where the algebra will come in. We're going to have a rate law for this thing that will be derived from the individual steps. Um, you're going to notice, so let me write this down, elementary steps. El elementary uh, steps sum to overall reactions. So you've got a bunch of elementary steps that sum up to the overall reaction. They add up. Elementary steps have a couple characteristics I want to let you know about. One is these are uni, uni or bimolecular. What that means is one molecule either decomposes or two molecules can hit, which is very probable mathematically uh, and would happen chemically. Three or more molecules hitting with the right collision and energy is nearly impossible. Um, there's intermediates in the elementary steps that need to cancel. That's very common. And sometimes we'll have something called a rate determining step. A rate determining step uh, is if you're on a team doing a group project and one person's an idiot. That person is the rate determining step. They will slow down not only the time it takes, but the grade you're going to get. Okay? So uh, there is always going to be a quote idiot when we do this, or a rate determining step, the slow one. Okay? So uh, there's going to turn out to be three cases of types of reaction mechanism problems three cases. They're all related to the rate determining step. Okay? Which one's the slow one? Again, the rate determining step is the slow step. One, if the RDS, rate determining step, is the first step. Remember there could be five, six, three, ten steps, elementary steps. If the rate determining step is the first step uh, in a series of reactions, that's the easiest, and I'll show you an example in a little bit. Two, if the RDS, the rate determining step, is the second step. If it's the second step, that's solved a totally different way versus if it's the first step. Uh, and it's a slightly harder problem. The third possibility, uh, I, I just kind of have to call it other. <laughs> For example, the rate determining step is somewhere else or it's not labeled. 
so occasionally you will not know what the rate determining step is. And you have to uh, solve it without having that. This third other category is the most difficult of the possible categories. Okay? One more thing. Uh, let me do a sample re uh, reaction. Let's say, say we have 3A plus 2B goes to 1C. And let's say this is one of our elementary steps. Okay? Just, just as an example, I want to pick something that looks a little complicated to illustrate my point. What you're going to do for each of these elementary steps is write a rate. That, and you're going to write the rate law for it. Now remember before we'd write K times each reactant. Say there's A and B. Well now, and we'd raise A to say the X power and we'd raise B to the y power. In the elementary steps, you don't have to do that anymore. You're going to raise them straight up to the power of the coefficient. So that's the neat thing about elementary steps. Before, when we first started the kinetics unit, I told you you could not put the coefficient as the exponent. That is true if it's an overall reaction, which is what we've seen so far. But if you have an elementary step, that's the coefficient is going to be the exponent. Okay, now I know all this concept uh, is totally meaningless right now. So what we're going to start doing is doing a bunch of examples. Uh, and after we do enough, you're going to start to get the idea. But in this, this section, you need to see a bunch of different examples to really figure it out.